Welcome back everyone here at CPAC. We're sitting down with Eric Carroll. He's host of Dad Talk Today. And Eric, we're great having you on again. Hey man, thanks Josh. So I understand one of the big, uh, you of course work on father rights and you know, issues around father, fatherhood in America. I understand you're dealing with a case right now though where a man actually got murdered by his father-in-law. And I, I know you've been following this case and some of the, some of the kind of concerns that are coming up from this. Why don't you start by telling us what happened? So I had a guy that had been wa watching me from the very beginning. Uh, he had reached out to me. He was facing a false allegation of sexual molestation of his child, and uh, which is very common in family court. He had proved his innocence. He was fully exonerated. He had proved his innocence every way you could. Um, and he came on my show back at Thanksgiving. I do this like holiday marathon where I talk to parents that uh, aren't with their kids during the holiday. And we had just got through talking. And he was supposed to get his children for the first time in three years a couple of weeks ago. And when he got to the designated meeting spot, he was met by his ex-father-in-law who murdered him. I can only imagine how that affected his kids. His kids? I mean, they're without their dad now and they're without their grandfather. I mean, it's just so many different angles with that. And, you know, I, John did everything he could, spending hundreds of thousands of dollars in the law courts and went through the justice system to prove his innocence. And this is ultimately what he got. And you said it's a commonplace issue where fathers, when they go to the divorce court, they get these false allegations against them, uh, claiming, I mean, really serious crime, child molestation. And even he was found to be innocent and was still killed because, I guess, the narratives were out there about it. Well, yeah, they call it the silver bullet for a reason. Uh, you know, if I say that you molested your child or you beat your wife, you're automatically looked at as guilty. And everybody wants to take up for the victim because that's a very heinous act. Um, but even these guys, when they can prove that they're innocent, and sometimes it's really hard to do, but when they prove they're innocent, there's still that black cloud over their head, like they've done something because of that allegation. And I assume you deal with men like this a lot who face really, I mean, really, divorce court is brutal sometimes. I, I know a lot of guys have gone through it. Yeah, man, it's, it's way more common than I actually thought. You know, when I first started doing dad talk, I was talking about parental alienation and, you know, child support issues. A lot of these fathers started coming telling me about these false allegations and I wasn't very well versed in it so it made me a little nervous at first the last thing we want to do is be taken up for somebody that had done something like this but I started finding out just how common it's used and family law attorneys almost somewhat promote it because it's so effective and we see it in politics as well. Yeah that's right. Well I, I can tell you that I was you know I talked to guys before I've gone to divorce court and you know, basically, there's a lot of weird ways that laws have to be used. Like if, you know, for example, to put a restraining order on you, you have to put a restraining order on them, and only then can you have like kind of legal protection in terms of moving forward. There's a lot of real dirty things that have to happen through the divorce courts that are actually promoted to the lawyers uh, with, with stuff like this. And do you find that it's the lawyers telling them to make these false claims, or is this just part of the game? I think it's a little bit of both. Honestly, uh, you know, I, I can't say for sure, but I mean, we, we've seen many times, you know, the lawyers, they definitely don't stop it. Um, it's, again, it's so effective, it's became common. It's, it's the easiest way to get the upper hand, especially for somebody that's, you know, facing losing their children or knows that they've done something wrong. You see, like in John's case, he had proved that this was false and they actually issued a restraining order against her in which she left North Dakota where the case went and fled to Idaho. So John had to go chase after her so he could see his kids and the case restarted because she went over state lines. So, and even that in some states is illegal. We talk about parental kidnapping yep. where one parent flees with the kids. Yep. And so this sounds like a pretty serious case for this it, it really was, man. And he was such a nice guy. And he knew, even after he had been through all of this, when he would talk to you, he would not say anything bad about that. And I'll be honest with you, I don't know if I could have had that demeanor. I mean, for somebody to fight that hard for their kids in the face of those allegations and they go to those lengths uh, to fight for them. This is probably one of the realest cases. You know, I talked to these guys on the show, but this is a person that I had to go stand over his casket. It doesn't get more real than that. Uh, you said this is a common issue you have guys telling you. I know you, you run a show, of course, talking to fathers who are facing parental alienation and issues like this. I mean, what are some of the biggest concerns they bring to you? Uh, it, there's just so many. I mean, paternity fraud is a big thing. 
Uh, right now, um, parental alienation, the false allegations, child support. Child support is a racket. I mean, I don't know how else to say it. There's so much incentive for the state to make these fathers pay as much as they can in child support, and mothers as well. This is happening to them just as much. Well, not just as much. It's a little bit more on the father's side, but it's just as serious when they face it. A lot of times, different circumstances. Um, and, you know, really, you know, we deal with all these political issues, we deal with so much pressure in life, and it comes down to it, right, the bedrock of society is the family. And, you know, I think all of us can relate to it. You know, we, we deal with a lot of things in the outer world, you know, politics again, jobs, so on, but really, you know, your family, having a spouse, being in love, having kids, this is like the foundation of life. And when that gets hit on, I mean, it's easy to think, you know, I could deal with it, but if it happens to you, I've seen, I've seen very strong men just get ruined by it. Suicide rates in uh, men at our age right now is seven times higher than that of women. And I believe that has a lot to do with family court. They do everything they can and they feel like I've spent all my money, I've, I've went through the justice system, there's nothing else I can do. And uh, it's made it really hard because I get so many messages and you can't keep up with them all. And it, it does something to you because you never know who in that message might be that person that's about to take the plunge. They said, I just can't do it anymore. And it's easy to say that, you know, these guys are wrong for doing something like that, but I understand why they're getting that way. I mean, if they feel like nothing I do is making a difference. Now, I know as well that you're engaged in also the political side of this too. You're trying to create, you know, organizations to support men and boys. And, you know, really you're dealing with probably some of the worst things that guys can possibly go through on a pretty regular basis. Could you tell our audience one thing about why this matters, why you've taken up this whole issue? I believe this is the number one issue that we're facing in society. And in all of the issues that we'll see here in CPAC this weekend, I believe, stems with the family. Um, we Parents are the ones that raise the children. Our youth right now, this is probably one of the most lost generations of all time and what they're being fed in TV, the indoctrination inside of school. We need parents in their children's life. And when you got one side that's not being involved, the fatherless issue is an epidemic right now. We see the suicide rates, the runaway rates, substance abuse, there's so many things that play into that. And, uh, why not more people are talking about it really fast. Eric Carroll, real pleasure to have you on Crossroads. Yes, sir, thank you.